Usually, around this time we would head to the airport to get our flight to Kyrgyzstan. Sadly, due to COVID-19, that is not possible anymore. So, we decided to spend a week in the Dolomites in Italy instead. here aren't as high as in Kyrgyzstan of course, but still are amongst the most beautiful mountain ranges in the whole world. Plus, since we've been here many times we already know how to navigate through the area and which spots we want to visit. For the first half of our one week trip we stayed in a hotel in St. Ulrich. From this little town, you can reach two of the most photographed places of the Dolomites by cable car, the Seceda and the Seisal, which lie on opposite sides of the Via Gardena. By the way, here it's good to know you can buy a single ticket to go on all the cable cars in the valley without having to pay each time, so you can actually save quite a lot of money. Besides those spots, there are many, many cool places with a driving range, like the famous Karersee, which is some kind of Instagram hotspot, the St. Magdalena Chapel, which also makes up for an iconic Dolomites image, or the Grödner Joch, a beautiful mountain road with lots of opportunities for long exposure car light rails photos. The weather forecast did look rather grim and day one started with lots of rain. Still we used the cable car to get up to the famous Seiser Alm, hoping to get better conditions in the evening as the weather can change it properly in the mountains. Since we waited for sunset we had a lot of time which we used to explore the area a little bit and check out a few of those hiking trails to find a good composition. For this spot I had a particular image in mind. I wanted to get a few cabins in the foreground while the mountains will fill the background of the photo. Luckily we quickly found the right spot and the weather got much better. So we now just had to wait for sunset and get the photos. To get the image I wanted to use the long focal length which makes the mountains in the back look much bigger while it also compresses the distance between foreground and background and thus helps to create a sense of scale with the small cabins in the front. As the sun went further and further below the horizon, we went back and came along a few other cool spots to take a few photos. But it was time to get back to the hotel since we had to hike back down all the way as the last cable car leaves at 6pm already. Day 2 started with much better weather. Actually, it was quite boring since there wasn't a single cloud in the sky. We still decided to go up the Sajeda, which is an awesome place for photography even during daytime. it would be possible to wait for sunset up there to get the golden hour light but we didn't want to hike back down as it is a rather long hike and I already got those photos last year. On top of the Sajeda you can expect a ton of people and of course many other photographers. So you might have to wait a little for a good spot. Since the sky wasn't that interesting, I tried to fill the frame with the cliffs. For this reason I used a rather long focal length again. After getting the pictures I wanted, we spent the rest of the afternoon hiking around this place as there are a ton of trails to follow and there again are many opportunities for cool images.
Later today, shortly before sunset, we drove up the Grödnerjoch. From here you have a fantastic view over the Val Gardena and the last sunlight perfectly lights up the surrounding mountains. The reason for visiting this spot though is from here you can capture amazing car light trail photos. Since you can see the whole pass road going almost all the way down the valley with lots of curves which makes it that much more interesting. So after securing a good spot which overlooks most of the road we just waited until it got dark so the car light trails were nicely visible when taking the pictures. Again, I used the longer focal length which helped to fill the whole frame, the back is covered by mountains while the road leads through the foreground of the photo. On day 3 we strolled through the village of Wolkenstein and went up the mountain using the cable car. Here you end up right underneath the Langkofel mountain and on the opposite side you again have a great view over Val Gardena. Since it was daytime and the light wasn't that nice either, we simply hiked around the area in search for interesting photo spots but ultimately ended up just enjoying the hiking trails. As the day went on, the weather got worse. There was no way of getting a nice sunset due to thick, low-hanging clouds and might rain every now and then. Because of this, we decided to drive up the Zellerjoch, another pass road, which offers more opportunities for long exposure car light trail shots. We drove up and down the road until we found a good spot overlooking a narrow curve. Again after setting up the camera we waited until after dark to capture the light rails. For this situation it was important to use an ultra wide angle lens to capture the curve in the foreground while still having the mountains visible in the back. Now it was time to change our base camp. After visiting a ton of locations around St. Ulrich, we were heading to the Dreizinnen region. After a nice two hour drive, we arrived at the Lago Antoro, where we would stay for the next few nights. The reason we chose that place for our stay was because Lago Antoro offers many, many good photo spots for sunrise and sunset, but also this place is right underneath the Dreizinnen and relatively close to other spots like the Cinque Torri, the Passo di Giao, or the Dürrensee. Sadly, the bad weather continued with lots of rain and dark clouds. Right at sunset, the rain stopped and we got to see the peak of the Dreizinnen lighting up in the golden light through the clouds. We started day 5 by checking out the surrounding mountain lakes. First, it was a short drive to the Dürrensee. I feel like this lake is often overlooked by many photographers because it's close to the famous Parkserwildsee. But I personally prefer the Dürrensee since there are way less people around. Once you have parked the car, you still have to find your way through a rather dense forest to make it to the shore of the Dürrensee. It can be tricky to navigate as there are many trails, but it's totally worth it for the view. To set up the photo I wanted, I was looking for a dead tree branch which I wanted to place as a leading line in the water. Depending on the size of the branch, it may be a good idea to use an ultra wide angle lens, but I ended up with a small branch and thus used a 24mm lens. 
This again had the benefit of bigger mountains in the back, which filled the frame. Then it was time to visit the Prag Savilsi. And I'm sure every one of you has seen the photos of this spot many many times on Instagram. First, let me tell you, if you want to visit it, do yourself a favor and go early in the morning to avoid crowds. If you come here later in the day, you will have to wait to get that one iconic photo. Since we didn't need that photo though, we simply hiked around the lake, enjoying the view and looking for lesser known photo spots. Towards the evening, the weather got worse again and it started to pour. Still, we tried our luck and drove up the road to the Paso di Chao to capture more car light trails, long exposure images. As we knew, there might not be many cars around, my girlfriend stayed in the car and I hiked up a small hill to get a better view over the road. I set up the camera and again used the longer focal length to nicely frame the mountain in the back with the road in the foreground. Once I was ready and it got dark enough, I gave my girlfriend a call and she started to drive up and down the road again. To start the day, we walked around Lago Antoro right outside our door since the weather was great and the light was hitting the mountain in the perfect angle. There were awesome photos to be taken in every direction. Again, sadly the weather got worse during the day and a thick layer of clouds soon covered the sky. You might think that sucks for photography, but you can get really cool long exposures in this situation. So we drove a few minutes to visit Cinque Torre rock formation. A quick cable car ride up the mountain and I immediately started taking images. No need to search for a composition since it's right in front of you. To make the movement of the clouds nicely visible, I put on a strong ND filter on the lens of my camera and set the exposure to 2 minutes, which will give you this awesome motion effect. Still, it's worth exploring the surrounding area and it's a lot of fun walking between these big rocks on all the trails in the area. Unfortunately, it soon began to rain again, so we headed back down. Here it's good to know that there's another nice little lake within walking distance of the cable car station. This might be an amazing spot for sunset or sunrise, we just didn't have the time to test it out anymore. The last day of our trip has come and luckily the weather finally looked good enough to visit the Dreizinnen. We waited until late in the afternoon until we drove up the road to the Dreizinnen parking lot. Keep in mind that you can only drive up there until 7pm and it will cost you around 30 euros if you're going with your own car. As we had a lot of time until sunset, we explored different trails and just strolled around the area. As it got closer to sunset, we headed to the final location with a breathtaking view of the Dreizinn. After getting a few shots of the area, the weather unfortunately got pretty bad with rough winds and heavy rain and no chance of getting the sunset photo like we have planned. So instead of getting ourselves in danger, we headed down back to the car. That was our one week trip to the Dolomites. We visit many very famous locations and the great thing is every spot in this video is easily accessible. 
Of course there are many many more, but they most likely require much more time and serious hiking. I would love to show them to you as well, but that's content for another video in the future.